Um, as Meg mentioned, my name is Sarah Woods. I am the Curator of Historic Properties and Archives with El Pomar Foundation. El Pomar is the nonprofit organization created in 1937 by entrepreneurs and philanthropists Spencer and Julie Penrose. Today, I am going to share with you a behind the scenes look at how El Pomar Foundation is celebrating the legacy of Spencer and Julie Penrose on the 80th anniversary of Penrose Heritage Museum and how this celebration allows us to learn more about the Penroses and the impact of their legacy on our lives today. Spencer and Julie Penrose developed and promoted the Pikes Peak region as a world-class destination. Many of the attractions and organizations that flourish here today were created by the Penroses within the first half of the 20th century. Uh, this historic photograph shows Spencer and Julie Penrose at their El Pomar home at approximately 1937. You can see behind Julie Penrose, there is a German shepherd and in between them a chow chow. Um, both Spencer and Julie Penrose were dog lovers, which is why their Broadmoor Resort is pet friendly. Um, and Julie Penrose actually bred chow chows and entered them into dog competitions. Um, so this slide here shows a list of the many organizations that the Penroses either founded, helped found, or to which they made significant contributions during their lives. Uh, it is important to know that this list is far from comprehensive. Some of the most iconic contributions we have from the Penroses include the Broadmoor Hotel, the Pikes Peak Highway, Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, the Cog Railway, Cheyenne Mountain Zoo, Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center at Colorado College, Pikes Peak Robust Rodeo, and of course, El Pomar Foundation. One way El Pomar Foundation honors the legacy of the Penroses is through the operation of three historic properties. Penrose House Conference Center, which is the historic home of Spencer and Julie Penrose. Will Rogers Shrine of the Sun, which the Penroses constructed in 1937 and also where they are buried. And Penrose Heritage Museum. So around this time last year, my colleagues and I were thinking about the important anniversaries coming up in 2021. Both the 150th anniversary of the founding of Colorado Springs and the 80th anniversary of Penrose Heritage Museum. We decided to honor both of these anniversaries with the creation of new exhibits as reflecting on the history of Colorado Springs also means reflecting on the ways in which Spencer and Julie Penrose contributed to the development and the identity of the city. Anniversaries are really important because they provide us with the opportunity to revisit and re-examine the past while encouraging us to contemplate the present moment and think about the future. So the first thing we did was revisit the history of Penrose Heritage Museum. Penrose Heritage Museum was first known as El Pomar Carriage Museum. It opened to the public in October of 1941. That year, Julie Penrose commissioned Bauhaus architect Jan Rutenberg to design a carriage museum at the Broadmoor for the collection of coaches acquired by her late husband, Spencer Penrose. This was actually the first project of many um, in the 15 year relationship between the philanthropist and her favorite architect. So Rutenberg began by making small scale replicas of the Penrose's carriages. And then he artfully arranged these replicas and designed an oval shaped building around them. Completed for $29,000, El Pomar Carriage Museum featured a concrete block exterior, cruciform steel posts wrapped in copper and structural glass that was rippled. The modern building's avant-garde aesthetic likely stood out in the Broadmoor neighborhood where it was located. 
The purpose of the original Alpamar Carriage Museum was to exhibit the Penrose's collection of carriages, along with other items they collected from their travels. Early inventories demonstrate the carriage collection occasionally grew in an effort to display more types of carriages once used throughout the Pikes Peak region. For nearly 60 years, visitors learned about the Penrose's carriages, their specific uses and functions, and saw some of the other interesting cultural items the Penrose's brought back from their many travels around the world. It was certainly an eclectic mix of objects with no real organizing principle outside of being items owned by the Penrose's. The letter shown on the right was one of many written by a student who visited the museum in 1956. You can see the other well-known attractions they visited around town, including Pioneers Museum, Cheyenne Mountain Zoo, and Garden of the Gods. In 2004, almost 50 years after Mrs. Penrose's death, it was decided the museum building would be torn down to make way for the construction of the Broadmoor's brownstone properties. The museum collection was relocated to a brand new building adjacent to Broadmoor Hall. The new exhibits designed by museum professionals from Can Kansas really modernized the display of the carriage collection. A researcher with the design team created new interpretation, which largely incorporated the museum's previous interpretation, but also incorporated information about Spencer and Julie Penrose. 10 years later in 2014, the museum was expanded both physically and in its collecting scope to include the official race car and memorabilia collection of the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. Also known as the Race to the Clouds, it is the city's longest running event and it was created by Spencer Penrose in 1916. No longer a carriage museum, the name changed to Penrose Heritage Museum to reflect this larger scope. So for the past seven years, we have shared with the public the history of America's second oldest automotive race and the Penrose collection of carriages. As we reflected on the history of Penrose Heritage Museum and how it evolved over the decades, we took the opportunity to contemplate the current moment. We asked ourselves a series of questions. Who visits Penrose Heritage Museum? Why do they visit? What are the recurring and common questions visitors ask us? What do visitors hope or expect to find at the museum, but don't? While we meet many carriage enthusiasts, race fans, and car aficionados, we also meet a lot of Colorado Springs residents and tourists who want to learn more about Spencer and Julie Penrose. We also welcome guests of the Broadmoor who want to learn more about the history of the resort as we do sit on resort property. With this in mind and thinking about the future of the museum, we identified opportunities we had to further the evolution of Penrose Heritage Museum through our new exhibits. Visitors to the museum learn a lot about carriages and race cars, but only a little about Spencer and Julie Penrose. What visitors really want is to learn more about the Penrose's personal lives, their many endeavors as a public spirited couple and their contributions to the community. We determined that we could share the histories in which our visitors were most interested by changing our approach to interpretation. Currently, when you visit the museum and you approach a carriage, you will learn all about that carriage, when it was made, who manufactured it, and what its purpose or function was. Uh, the details of the objects themselves remain primary in our exhibit text. Any related information about the Penroses when present is secondary. And this is largely the result of the museum's origins and how it has grown and evolved over time. But we determined that by switching from an object-based approach to interpretation, 
to a narrative-based approach to interpretation that we could make the story of the Penroses primary in our exhibit text and then use the artifacts to make those stories tangible. Switching our approach to interpretation presents another major opportunity, which is to re-examine the artifacts we display. The artifacts on display in the museum, with the exception of those related to the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb exhibits, are largely the same artifacts that have been on exhibit since 1941. So repeat visitors to the museum rarely see anything new. We have a wonderful collection of artwork, artifacts, historic photographs, and archival materials that we can better utilize. Many of these items have never been shared with the public. With these opportunities in mind, we identified four goals for our, for our new exhibits. First, we would honor the original El Pomar Carriage Museum Julie Penrose created in 1941, while demonstrating how the museum has grown over the past 80 years. Second, we would tell well-researched stories about the Penroses and their endeavors through a narrative approach to interpretation. Third, we would exhibit never before seen items from our collections to make these stories real and tangible for visitors. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, we would aim to draw connections between the Penrose's personal lives and their endeavors, and between their endeavors and our lives today. Our ultimate goal is to demonstrate that the Penrose legacy is still relevant and meaningful for those who visit the museum. We really want our visitors to see themselves reflected in our exhibits. So one of the galleries in the museum um, features very large glassed in display cases with many exhibit drawers beneath those cases. And we have decided these, we have divided these display cases into four sections, each with its own theme. And it's in this gallery space that we will tell the story of Spencer and Julie Penrose. The first theme is travel. This section focuses on the Penroses as a couple, as well as some of the details of their personal lives. The Penroses traveled the world extensively, and these travels played a significant role in the ways in which they developed and also promoted the Pikes Peak region. In this section, we discuss where they traveled, how they traveled, and what they brought back from their travels. We aim to demonstrate how these experiences inspired their creation of the Broadmoor, its decor, and its offerings. The second theme is sports. This section focuses largely on Spencer Penrose. Here we discuss how his upbringing in Philadelphia, particularly his relationships with his brothers and their shared hobbies, influenced his development of both the Broadmoor and the city of Colorado Springs through sport. The third theme is culture. This section focuses largely on Julie Penrose. Here we discuss how her upbringing in Detroit, particularly her relationship with her father, influenced her leadership in Colorado Springs. We also focus on how her own experiences with loss made her acutely aware of the suffering of others and thus influenced her legendary philanthropy. And the final theme is heritage. This section will bring together all previous sections of the exhibit, and it will be in direct conversation with the modern name of the museum. Now, there are certainly many ways to define heritage, but one way to think about Penrose heritage is to think about what we have inherited from the Penroses and also how that inheritance affects our lives today. 
So while I don't want to share all of the details of the new exhibit, because I hope those of you who can uh, will find time to visit this fall and winter um, to experience the exhibit for yourself, um, I do want to share with you some of our new discoveries, as well as some of the artifacts that we are sharing with the public for the very first time. So our collecting scope is limited to items that either belonged to Spencer or Julie Penrose or have a very close connection to them. As such, it is somewhat rare for us to collect new items, but we have been really fortunate over the last three years to acquire some new artifacts that we are now exhibiting for the first time. Perhaps the most significant of these new artifacts are hats that belonged to Spencer Penrose. A rare and wonderful event occurred in August of 2019 when El Pomar's chief investment officer, Thayer Tut, made a remarkable discovery. Um, inside a storage space under some stairs in one of our office buildings, Mr. Tut found a box containing hats and garments that belonged to Spencer Penrose. And as we recovered each hat from the box, we recognized many of them instantly from well-known historic photographs of Mr. Penrose wearing those hats. For example, we have the pith helmet that Mr. Penrose wore on one of the many trips he and Mrs. Penrose took to Africa. We also have the bowler hat Mr. Penrose wore while he famously protested prohibition. Um, most of the hats we were very fortunate were in great condition, but they were pretty dirty. So we have hired a conservator to treat them for us so that we can exhibit them for you. Um, we are really excited to display the pith helmet and some of these other hats in our exhibit uh, because hats are such an intimate item of clothing and were worn by both Mr. and Mrs. Penrose regularly throughout their lives. Uh, and in fact, we actually have hats displayed in every section of the exhibit. One thing that we have very little of is moving images of the Penroses. There is a short film clip uh, with audio of Mr. Penrose discussing the construction of Will Rogers Shrine, which you can actually view on um, the Shrine's website. But not much else exists, at least as far as we know. Um, but at the foundation, we do have silent home film footage of the Penroses throwing a luau at their home in Hawaii in 1938. So while the Penroses lived most of the year in Colorado Springs, they did have homes in both Paris and Hawaii where they typically spent the winter months. Um, this silent home film footage has never been viewed by the public. Um, so as part of our new exhibit, visitors can watch a short documentary we made about the Penrose's life in Hawaii using this home film footage. Um, the documentary also features never before seen family photographs that we discovered in 2019. So these family photos, uh, unfortunately, are largely images that we cannot exhibit due to their really poor quality. Um, what they are actually are a series of photographs which show intimate family photographs taped to the walls of what appears to be someone's kitchen. Um, I have been able to determine that the photos do not show the Penrose's homes in Colorado Springs or at Turkey Creek Ranch in Central City or their Paris apartments. Um, I imagine these images are probably from inside of their home in Hawaii. But what I did, um, I took very um, high resolution, large scans of these photographs so that I could focus in as best I could on the individual photographs that were taped to the walls. Um, so as you can see, we, we can't exhibit most of these because of the quality of them, but they are significant because they show us what photographs were important to the Penroses, and they also provided context for important moments in their lives. 
Um, this photograph, for instance, was taken um, at the luau that the Penroses hosted, which is filmed in their home footage, and that helped us narrow in on when the event occurred and some of the people that were present for the luau. And the image that I'm sharing with you here, um, the, the image of Julie Penrose on the right is a really well-known photograph of Mrs. Penrose. Um, but something that was really exciting to find in these family photos is the image on the left, which is the uh, is just a photograph from the, the, same, the same photo shoot, but from a different angle. So we are excited, even though we can't share the majority of these um, with our visitors in our exhibits just because of the low quality of the images. There are some that actually look really well um, that we are able to exhibit and, and these are actually uh, two of those images. So both the home film footage and these family photographs shed light on the extent to which the Penroses were well acquainted with many prominent figures in Hawaii, including famous hula dancer Aggie Old. You can see Aggie Old and Spencer Penrose in a very um, candid moment dancing on the beach together. Um, the Penroses' time in Hawaii and their relationship with Hawaiian stars artists and landscape architects inspired much of the decor at the Broadmoor in the 1930s, which is something that we discuss to a great extent in the exhibit. Um, one of the reasons that the Penrose's travels were so important is because they were always looking for opportunities to bring um, foreign places and cultures to Colorado Springs for the benefit of the people here. Something else that we are sharing for the first time at Penrose Heritage Museum is more information about Julie Villiers Lewis, meaning Mrs. Penrose's early life and her upbringing in Detroit. There has been a tendency to focus on her life as Mrs. Spencer Penrose, with a brief mention of her first marriage and the tragic losses she endured with the death of her young son, Jimmy, and her first husband, Jim. A few years ago, I connected with one of Mrs. Penrose's living descendants in her home state of Michigan. Uh, this gentleman, who is the family archivist, has been very generous in sharing early family history and family photographs of Auntie Jewels, which is how they refer to her. Um, he gave us permission to share some of these family photographs in our new exhibit so that we can share with our visitors a more complete history of the life of Julie Villiers Lewis McMillan Penrose. Mrs. Penrose's relationship with her father, her family's role in Detroit, and also the prominence of her first father-in-law, U.S. Senator James McMillan, really show how her upbringing and her exposure to civic engagement from a young age influenced the work she did in Colorado Springs. And I just wanna point out if you can see my cursor here, um, that this right here is Julie Penrose. This is her first husband, Jim McMillan. This is their daughter, Gladys. And this was their young son, Jimmy. Something that we are doing in the museum for the very first time also is sharing archival records as part of our exhibit. Um, so as an archivist, I really enjoy managing and using the Penrose's personal papers and wanted to share some of those records with our visitors. The exhibit space we are using in the museum has 14 exhibit drawers that are covered in glass. And this allows us to create corresponding mini exhibits for visitors to discover. We are using these drawers to showcase archival records, including historic photographs, correspondence, uh, the Penrose's passports from their many travels abroad, and other fun ephemera. We are also exhibiting archival correspondence, which illuminates the origins of the three stained glass windows in Pauline Chapel. 
Uh, Mrs. Penrose built Pauline Chapel in 1919 at the Broadmoor and then commissioned three stained glass windows in the 1940s. Each of these three windows uh, respectively honor her parents, Alexander Lewis and Elizabeth Ingersoll, her first son, Jimmy, who died at the age of 10 from appendicitis, and of course, her second husband, Spencer Penrose. Uh, we are currently working with a photographer in Denver to bring one of these stained glass windows into our exhibit. So you'll definitely want to check that out. Um, something that we recently discovered that's actually not mentioned in the exhibit um, is something that we learned just last month. So the earliest known mention um, that we know of, um, of the original carriage museum Julie Penrose created, dates back to 1940, when she began discussing plans with architect Jan Rutenberg. Um, but just last month, we found what we believe to now be the earliest reference to such a museum, dated from 1923, when Spencer Penrose was still alive. The first mention of a museum at the Broadmoor was published in the Gazette on November 13th, 1923. As part of a $40,000 renovation project, a building was to be built across from the hotel garage to house what was called a display room, as well as a carpenter shop, a plumbing shop, and an electrical shop. And the article says that this display room was to exhibit the Chester Allen Arthur coaches purchased by Spencer Penrose in 1922, along with other relics of interest. Um, what is interesting about the carriage collection that we exhibit at Penrose Heritage Museum is that approximately one third of those carriages belonged to Spencer Penrose. Another third he acquired from his friend, Chester Allen Arthur II, who was the son of US President Chester Allen Arthur. And another third were acquired from the Penrose's good friends, Charles and Virginia Baldwin. Um, so at the foundation, we have sort of um, presumed or imagined that one of the reasons Julie Penrose might have created the museum was to empty the carriage house at El Pomar so that she could donate the home to the Sisters of Charity, which she did in 1944. But this new information sheds light on what might be another motivation for the purpose of creating the museum, which would be to complete a project or actualize an idea that originated with her beloved husband. It seems Spencer Penrose had the idea 20 years earlier to collect and exhibit a collection of carriages at the Broadmoor. Um, I was unable to find any other mention of this display room at the Broadmoor or any mention of a display of the Arthur coaches beyond this singular newspaper clipping. Um, so whether or not Mr. Penrose completed this planned display room, uh, we do know for sure Mrs. Penrose completed the project just a few years after his death. And I think that this is a really um, important point to consider. After Mr. Penrose died in 1939, Mrs. Penrose took leadership positions, serving as vice president of their Broadmoor Hotel and president of El Pomar Foundation. These are positions she maintained until her death in 1956. The last 16 years of her life, in which she was once again a widow, she worked really hard to carry forth the projects and causes that were important to both of them. Projects entirely focused on serving the needs of the people of Colorado. Um, much of this work she did in honor of her late husband. Um, she actually preferred to be called Mrs. Spencer Penrose, not Mrs. Julie Penrose. Many projects she completed or gifts that she made, such as those to Glockner Penrose Hospital, she made in her husband's name. And this may be why the legacy of the Penroses as it prevails today has largely focused on Spencer Penrose more than it has focused on Julie Penrose or the Penroses as a couple. One of our recent focuses at El Pomar has been to elevate the legacy of Julie Penrose so that it is acknowledged and visible to the same extent as the legacy of Spencer Penrose. 
While they each had their own interests and passion projects, they worked as a team in the interest of the well being of the people of Colorado. Um, one of the ways we um, are working to elevate the legacy of Julie Penrose is through the creation of a new community award. The Julie Penrose Award is now presented to outstanding women who, like Julie Penrose, made significant contributions to their communities through their leadership and dedication. The female trustees of El Pomar Foundation spearheaded this endeavor. Uh, we hoped to honor the inaugural recipient last year on Mrs. Penrose's 150th birthday, but the COVID-19 pandemic interrupted those plans. But this year, we were able to honor the first recipient, Margot Lane. We also commissioned the first ever bronze statue of Mrs. Penrose for the gardens of her El Pomar home. We have statues of Mr. Penrose at Penrose House, the Foundation offices, and even a bronze bust of him up at Will Rogers Shrine. But this is the first time Mrs. Penrose has been memorialized in this way. And we wanted to incorporate her into the museum and our new exhibits with this same level of intention. In July, we unveiled new exhibits at the entrance of the museum in an effort to put the entirety of our collection into context and to represent Spencer and Julie Penrose side by side. Our previous entrance banner, which you can see on the left, featured individual portraits of them with Mr. Penrose's face slightly elevated higher than Mrs. Penrose's. Uh, so we created a new entrance banner that features a historic photograph of them standing together, ready to set sail on one of their many adventures. And to represent the Penroses as a couple through a singular object, we chose to exhibit one of those original copper cruciform posts from the original El Pomar Carriage Museum. The post represents Julie as it served as a structural support of the museum she built for her husband's carriage collection. And the copper in which the post is wrapped represents Spencer Penrose as he made the bulk of his fortune through copper mining. Under the stairs, which are right inside of the front of the museum, we chose to exhibit pairs of artifacts that represent the Penroses side by side, but also as individuals. We chose to exhibit a saddle that belonged to Spencer alongside a saddle that belonged to Julie. So going back to this concept of switching from an object-based approach to interpretation to a narrative-based approach to interpretation. We decided to focus the exhibit text here, not on the construction and use of these particular types of saddles, but rather on how the unique characteristics uh, and interests of Mr. Penrose and Mrs. Penrose are represented through the saddles. So Mr. Penrose's saddle, the one on the left, um, is very ornate. It's a parade saddle. It features beautiful silver decorations and stamped designs. Um, and this is a saddle that he rode in a parade uh, when he was promoting the new Will Rogers Stadium that he built at the Broadmoor in 1938. And this saddle really represents his flair for promotion. And the saddle next to it, Mrs. Penrose's saddle, is the side saddle that she rode in her youth. And this really represents her cultured upbringing in Detroit, as well as her European tastes and sensibilities. So to wrap up this presentation, um, I want to return to what I shared earlier was the most important goal of our new exhibits, which is to present a reflection on what we have inherited from the Penroses and how that inheritance impacts our lives today. We want our visitors to understand that Spencer and Julie Penrose created many of the institutions that are endeared to the hearts of Coloradans and tourists past and present. Uh, the Penrose has created many of our beloved tourist attractions, sports traditions, arts organizations, healthcare facilities, schools, and museums. We want our visitors to see that we inherited from the Penroses Many of the places where we gather, spectate, create, heal, and learn. Uh, these are the places where we come together as a community and make memories with our families and our friends. 
when one looks at the long list of contributions of Spencer and Julie Penrose, uh, there are certainly many that, that um, could be considered their greatest contribution. Um, perhaps it is Penrose Hospital, which has pioneered the research and treatment of cancer. Uh, maybe it's the Pikes Peak Highway, which attracts visitors from all over the world. It could be the Broadmoor, the Grand Dame of the Rockies, which stimulates tourism and commerce in our city. One could easily argue it is El Pomar Foundation, which has carried forth the Penrose tradition of philanthropy throughout the state of Colorado for 84 years. I would argue our greatest inheritance from Spencer and Julie Penrose is opportunity. So before Spencer Penrose traveled west, he was a student at Harvard. One year before he graduated in 1886, he wrote an essay in which he responded to the question, do great men, climate, or national stock most influence national development? Mr. Penrose, a man of 21, answered, one great man opens and prepares the way for many others. Thus, the influence of great men is continually multiplied and increased. Before Spencer Penrose came west, he defined greatness. And by the time of his death, he embodied that definition, as did Julie Penrose. Through their partnership and their endeavors, the Penroses created opportunity by opening and preparing the way for generations of Coloradans to do great and important work of varying degrees to contribute to the success and development of the Pikes Peak region. And this is really what we want to help our visitors understand, um, the connections between this past and this history with their own lives today. We hope that these new exhibits will inspire reflection, appreciation, and perhaps even action for being more involved in one's own community. Um, so my hope is that anyone who has visited the museum in the past will visit us again and see something new. That anyone who already knows a lot about the legacy of Spencer and Julie Penrose will visit us and learn something new. Um, and for anyone that is visiting us for the first time, I really hope that they leave with a more complete picture of who these individuals were and the impact they made as a public spirited couple. Ultimately, I hope that visitors will leave the museum inspired to find a way to make their own community a better place for those who live there and for those who visit. Um, so Penrose Heritage Museum, if you're not familiar, we are free. We provide validated parking in the Broadmoor parking garage. We're also conveniently located across the street from a bus stop. Um, our brand new exhibit sharing the life and legacy of Spencer and Julie Penrose opens to the public on October 2nd. Um, and I hope that you will all be able to find an opportunity to visit us sometime this fall and winter to experience the exhibit for yourself.